Hi there, you join me today to see the lead setup that I use when slap line fishing. I tend to fish slap lines in the majority of my fishing situations. That's unless either there's heavy weed or obviously if I'm snag fishing. As you can see, this is an inline setup and this is my preferred lead arrangement, be it either in semi-fixed form or in drop-offs. Again, that's all dependent on what the weed's like in the lake that I'm fishing. The biggest concern when I first started slackline fishing is probably the same as yours. Will I get a drop back? Well, the actual answer to that is yes you can and this is how you do it. This is what I came up with and this will always give you positive bite indication if that fish decides to turn tail and leg it straight at you. Here's how it works. Basically, Mr Carp's going to be swimming around hoovering up all those lovely freebies that you've put down during your session. You shouldn't be spooked as you can see, I've got no tubing, I've got nothing else on it. It's straight through Mirage fluorocarbon. When it decides to finally get to your rig and pick it up, this is where all of a sudden the lead and the system comes into play. Because you've got this lead here, and most of the weight is distributed down the bottom end, that really helps to set that hook home hard. As it pulls, this is semi-fixed, and what it will do is it will hit, set the hook, <clears throat> this is the bit that confuses the cart, he'll start to try and shake that hook out of its mouth. Most of the time, if that's fixed, it can use the lead as a pendulum point to throw the hook. But because this is now running away, it's really going to confuse it. Because you're fishing a nice slack line, you'll get a run going that way, which will make you bobbing scream. You should be dancing. However, if it goes towards you, as in runs right directly at you, because this lead is fixed in a position, it's classed as like an anchored pivot point, it will stay still and the cart will run towards you, but you can see it's still peeling line off your reel. It will mean that basically now, backdrops ain't a worry, and all you'll have to worry about is the chip paint on the bottom of your rod from your bobbin. Now I'm sure the question on your lips is, Lee, how on earth do you make this witchcraft happen? Simply put, quite easily actually. All it takes is two of the new Gardener Covert uh, mini anti-tangle sleeves, a cut down standard covert tail rubber, a flexi ring swivel, a Q ring and a quick lock swivel. All you need to literally do, take your Mirage fluorocarbon or whatever your line may be, feed on your first covert sleeve, take your, this is a Gardener inline flat lead and what I actually do is I take the insert out of it. The reason I do that is because I like to pop this into here just to allow it all to move that little bit easier and allow the rig to break up that little bit. Sometimes when you cast and you land with a straight through insert it can sit a little bit wonky. With this it can almost break its own back and just allows it to lay that little bit softer. The tail rubber that's cut down now, because the hole's quite big and we all like it a bit tighter, is push that in there. Then the next one, which is again the Gardner Micro uh, anti-tangle sleeve, sorry, mini anti-tangle sleeve, I'll get in trouble for this. And you push that in and that is what creates that little bit of suction, that little bit of pressure that allows it to pop out. You then just slide that down over your flexi ring swivel now you're probably thinking to yourself, why on earth have I got all them extra bits in there? Quite simply put, flexibility, pivot points, the ability for it to lie flat regardless of what you're pretty much what you're laying over the top of. With that like that, I'm guaranteeing you that is going to up your catch rate.